guys, it's Sam and this is my spoilery discussion for Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. So as I said, this video will have spoilers, so if you haven't read this book, go ahead and check out my spoiler-free review, which will be linked on the screen. So like I said in my review, I did start to really enjoy this book about halfway through because a lot of things that were annoying me about the plot line were resolved. So let's just get into it right from the beginning. Will Herondale. <laughs> So I'm as shocked as you are that I don't fall head over heels for Will Herondale. I think it's because he's such a hyped character and because he just is too cookie cutter, like, for what I should like, which some people are probably like, what does that even mean? It's just like he checks off too many boxes in a convenient way and I just, I don't like, I don't really like that about him. So for most of the first book, I just really didn't enjoy his brattiness and I had a feeling that the reasoning for his brattiness wasn't going to be as good and the payoff from that wasn't going to be as good as it could have been. So when you find out the whole like, he was cursed by a demon and that's why he can't love anybody, I'm just like, ugh, like, I just don't like it. I find it like super convenient and he's bratty. Like that's the thing is like, uh, like if he would have run off, I understand that he was like 12 when this happened, but he still ran off to be like part of a family and it's like, no, no, like if, if you don't, you can't control people falling in love with you or loving you as like a, you know, as the caretaker type of relationship and since he didn't stick to that kind of personality all the time and he let his like good side show or whatever, then he f he failed at that. It was just like, it's, oh, it's, it makes him so annoying. Like, I'm just so annoyed by him. And he's bratty and mean. And it's like, I'm doing it to save people. I just don't, I just don't buy it. I find it really convenient and I don't, I don't like it. He should have ran off and been by himself and taken care of him. Like, y you know, like he could have done that back in the day as a boy in Victorian London. Like, that could have happened. But no, he went to the Institute where he could be taken care of and loved by people. You know? And just his- the brattiness and like how mean- I still can't get over how mean, like really incredibly mean he was to Tessa in the first book. Like, and kind of calling her borderline like a whore and- So his excuse isn't good enough for me and it was just like- I felt it was really contrived. So then when that gets resolved, and it's like, you were never cursed from the beginning. I'm just like, come on. I mean, I did feel a little bad for him actually. Like that's when I started to kind of come around to him a little bit because I was like, oh, that sucks. You're kind of dumb, but like that's that sucks. And wouldn't you figure that out yourself a little bit? Once you knew more stuff about demons as you become like more of a shadow hunter, like wouldn't you have known that you could have been cursed? Like I get that like you saw, like I understand I just still don't like it. I don't, I think that that wasn't good enough payoff. I think it was really contrived and I just, I just don't like it. But I like what it did for the angst factor of the love triangle. <laughs> Let me tell you, like that was like once, so once that started happening and you saw her and Jem getting closer throughout the book and then Will towards the end, you know, finds out that his curse like isn't actually a curse and he can like be with who he wants to be with and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh no. They're gonna, they're gonna set this up. Like, Jen's gonna propose to her, she's gonna say yes, and then Will's gonna come, and that's what happened. And it was like, yes, because I live off of angst. I really do. So, like I said, Jem is my favorite of the two guys, but here's the thing. I don't really, like, I wouldn't say that Jessa is my OTP or anything. I don't really ship her with either of them a ton. I ship the love triangle. And I know people are gonna be like, oh, what? But yeah, I don't have, like, a team or anything. Like, it's not like... One of them is my OTP and the other one's my no TP. And I like the dynamic, I like the angst, like a lot. I like all of that. I'm, I'm fine with her being, with both of them, I'm fine with them being in a polyamorous relationship. Like that's the ideal, honestly. I know it's probably not gonna happen, but like, they all love each other, so why don't you all just be together? So yeah, once Will resolved his stuff and stopped being a brat, I actually started to really like him. Like his jokes were better and like he, He's just like funnier and he's done with his bratty stuff, so I started to like him more. I'm still not like obsessed with Will Herondale. Like I still don't think he's like book boyfriend material or anything like that, but like I, I'm okay with him now. Where like Jem is book boyfriend material because he's sweet and kind and he's just so amazing. But like, yeah, I don't, again, not my OTP. I ship the love triangle, man. So Jessamine as a character was like 
someone I was waiting to get more fleshed out and maybe she will be more in Clockwork Princess if we see her, I don't know. But I find her mean girl personality to just be really exhausting and I was expecting her to get more complex and be more than that and be more than just like a boy crazy, I don't know, boy crazy like naive girl and she wasn't. And I'm like, I really wanted her to be smarter than that. Like I kind of wanted her to be like, uh, turn into kind of like a Zoya from the Grisha trilogy, where she's a huge badass and she just has like a resting bitch face kind of thing. I wanted more of that from her and to turn that mean girl trope around and she just didn't. So that's disappointing. Like, I don't really feel bad for her because I'm just like, you're kind of awful with no excuse like the entire time. <laughs> like her excuse of like, I don't want to be a shadow hunter, meh, like, okay? I really liked how the side characters got fleshed out in this book, so Henry and Charlotte are probably some of them that I shipped the most in here because I'm just like, I didn't see you guys being all cute, and now they're all cute because they didn't think the other one wanted to be with them, and now they get to be all cute together, and I'm like, what? I just wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting it, and now it's all, it's all cute. I also like, is it Sophie? Sophie and Gideon? Like what? Right? I wasn't, I didn't see that coming and now it's all like, that's angsty too? And I was like, what? So the only thing that I'm a little like, hmm, about that I don't know from TMI is the Lightwood kind of like history. So I'm gonna, don't spoil me about it, but I'm going to look that up at the end, like when I'm done with everything, so I can kind of see like where these Lightwoods connect to the Lightwoods from that series. Cause I'm like, oh, I bet you Gideon's the one that's like, all good and ends up being their ancestor or whatever. Maybe not, but he's adorable and I like him a lot. And I kind of hope that Gabriel in the end is like pulled over to their side because he's just being led astray by his douchey demon pox dad. <laughs> like, what? Like when that became a thing, I was like, are we serious right now? But yeah, and so I didn't really see him, like I saw him being connected to the Magister, but I didn't expect him to be connected in that way and yeah. Drama. Family drama, let me tell ya. I'm also really glad that Tessa's brother's gone now because I found him really insufferable. And we get the big reveal of he wasn't really the brother and he was the you know, like aunt's kid and blah blah blah. Although Cassie really beats you over the head with that because she, after that gets revealed, she mentions it every time she brings Nate up. Like, she, it, you know, Tessa's thinking like, Nate, my brother, who's not really my brother, who was my aunt's son. Nate, who's really my cousin. Nate, who really belonged to my aunt. I'm like, okay, I get it. We, we know, Cassie, you told us. You don't need to keep telling us over and over again. Like, I, I know, I understand. That's the thing about her writing that I find really, like, you can tell that she got her start in fan fiction. I said this in my first review too, because she just tends to beat you over the head with certain details, like certain descriptors, and then certain things that she reveals, she just keeps like reminding you of. And I'm like, yo, my memory's bad, but it's not that bad. You just told me that the last chapter. Like, I get it. I'm not gonna forget that big plot twist, I get it. So really interested to know who Tessa is exactly, like with the reveal of like, oh your mom was a shadow hunter and your dad was a demon and blah blah blah, and how they're like, that can't happen, but I'm pretty sure from like things I know about the fandom that that can happen or that is a thing. So we'll see. Everything. Don't, don't spoil me! Don't give me any hints! Don't be like, wait and see! Just speculating. Don't spoil it for me. But like, yeah, I'm interested. And I just love that she's gonna be like around because she's like, you know, warlock and all like immortal and stuff and her power's the best and she has no like mark. How great is that? Like everything's perfect for her. Speaking of warlocks, yes, I love Magnus Bane and everything about him. I loved him in the first book. I knew about him before I got into the book because everyone knows who Magnus is. And then this book, I'm just like, I love you. Everything about you is great. He's just perfect and he just wants to help. And he's just so great. I just love him. So I... I'm loving the love triangle aspect of everything. I know I've mentioned it a few times already, but like, that's what I'm here for. That's straight up why I'm reading the series, because everyone said that it was a really good love triangle and I love me some Victorian steampunk London, you know? So that's why I'm reading it. And now that it's in there, I'm like, yes. Like as soon as Jen proposed and she said yes, and I knew that Will was gonna come running to her, I'm just like, oh, revive me. Like I am ready. I'm ready for all that. And the fact that they're not gonna be fighting over her because they both love one another so much. Like when she came to the conclusion, like, I can't leave Jem for you because you never forgive me for breaking Jem's heart anyway. And like this whole thing, they, they're they never going to try to steal her away from the other one. Like most love triangles are, it's going to be like, everyone loves each other and they're sad. <laughs> it's perfect. So my theory right now, and again, don't hint. I'm saying this because people have a tendency to hint at things and think they're not spoiling, but like, 
the hint and the winky face like is a spoil, you know, because they're like, just you wait, your theory, wink, wink, like that. That's telling me without telling. Like, what? So that's why I'm giving all the warnings. I'm like, please don't do that. Although I plan on posting this after I'm already done with Clockwork Princess. I'm reading it right now. I'm marathoning this series. Can you believe it? It's like really crazy. I haven't done that in a long time. But I just wanted to get it over with so that people wouldn't spoil me on stuff because I know it's like so hyped and spoil like territory. So anyway, my theory right now, because I haven't really started reading Clockwork Princess yet, I'm like 10 pages into it, is that it's going to be like a Pearl Harbor type situation for those of you that haven't seen that movie, which like I feel like a lot of people have and people know how it is. So it's two friends in love with the same girl and one ends up like getting with her and then another one like comes back and then one ends up dying. And then the other two live happily together. So that's, all, that's like a really boiled down version. But that's kind of what I think is going to happen with this. So I feel like her and Jem are going to get married and be together for like a while and it's gonna be all like angsty or whatever and he's gonna die and then she's gonna be with Will that's kind of like that's kind of how I feel it's gonna happen because like we know Jem's dying you know you know I feel like it's gonna be probably angstier than that but that's what I like I feel like that's gonna be the foundation of what's gonna happen I'm here for all of it I'm here for all the angst I'm here for them all of them making love hard eyes at one another like I'm here for all of it I, I ship the, I ship the triangle I don't ship the separate pieces I ship the triangle I'm here for it. So I'm excited that the last book is going to reveal just all of the big plot things. We're going to find out about Tessa, we're going to find out about like the Magister, we're going to find all these things out and how everything connects and it's going to be so great. I like that this book was a very focused on characters a book and I'm excited for how the last book's going to wrap everything up. I've heard from basically everybody that I've talked to that the books get better with each book so I started really liking this one halfway through and I feel like I'm going to enjoy the majority of Clockwork Princess. Fingers crossed. I want to know about her mom, I want to know about the clockwork like angel thing that she has. You know, I want to know about a lot of things and I want to see how this delicious love triangle is going to play out. Yeah, I'm ready. So I enjoyed this book. I still feel like it has a lot of flaws. Like it's not, you know, not perfect. I, like I said, the little whole like curse thing with Will is just like lame. But other than that, that's been resolved so that can go away now and I'm free to live my angsty life. So comment below and let me know what you thought of Clockwork Prince. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!